Are you ready for some more learning? Okay, seriously though, um, here I'm using Cam Studio yet again. I just tried recording this with Camtasia. The two programs do not get along well together. It caused a lot of lag and flickering and just general annoyance, so I'm going to have to go back to this because it's the lesser of two evils. I certainly hope that there won't be massive audio problems anymore. Anyway, last time here we made this pond that dries up at the whistle. If you use the whistle on any other screen, though, it won't have any effect, and instead it will summon a tornado. And so, here we want to have actually set where that's going to take you. So, that would be miscellaneous data, whistle warps, and there are, for some strange reason, nine of them. I thought there were only eight. But anyway, um, it depends on how many Triforce pieces you have. So I really don't know what's up with the number nine, because you can only really have eight of those. But anyway, ignoring that, um, since we only have one piece right now, the only one we have to worry about is Warp 1. So we're going to set that to go to the room with the dungeon on it, just because that's sort of like the default way to do things. So that would be the Overworld D-Map, screen 43. That's all there is to it. It's really that simple. However, you do have to make sure that you have the drop-off point selected on that screen or else the tornado is going to dump you on the upper left corner. So be sure to have those. I'm not sure which one it uses. I think the green one. So anyway, um, also we started working on this cave, so that's what I'm, we're going to continue doing. I have some stuff planned out for this cave. I haven't planned ahead that much, though. So, let's make sure that this matches the other side. And change the palette. Oh. It would help if I was using the right C set. Okay, sorry. Fixing that, fixing that. The floor is really just black. That's kind of strange. Okay, um... I said I wanted to make a potion shop. There's a couple other things we got to do in here because I actually like played through the game to check what items we have at this point and stuff. Um, so you're running a little bit low on money at this point. And here I'd like to make kind of like a crossroad screen. So I'm gonna just sort of draw it semi-randomly here but it has to go off in all the different directions. I think that looks alright. So then we've got to round off all the corners and whatnot. You can do this. I mean, you don't need any help figuring this out. Don't do that. Um... I'm missing any. I don't know. Then we put on these top blocks. I don't know why you really need them, but whatever. So here we've got the little cave thing. <coughs> Sorry. And I also wanted to put in some water that you'll be rafting on. I'm not sure if there's a good C set for this in this palette. There probably isn't. So, if I haven't already shown how to edit palettes, I honestly can't remember if I did or not, now would be a good time to show that. So, edit this, pal <coughs> this palette, excuse me, uh, go into graphics and palettes, then you'll want to go in, uh, Vols, I guess, and find the one that we're working on, which would be caves. Then, pretty much any C set will do, but we want it to match that one, so let's edit this palette. And here we've got the color editor. Uh, since we're using the NES graphics, it'll only use three colors in any given C set. So we're going to add one to this spot. And we want to have a watercolor. So there's a few ways you can do that. Basically, you can drag on this box and find the color that you want. Since it's in a cave, we want this water to be fairly dark. And then you can slide this to darken or lighten it further. So let's have it like that and might as well put in a slightly lighter one as well. 
Um, another way you can edit colors is with the 1, 2, and 3 keys. I apologize if I've already said this before, but um, you have your red, green, and blue values down here on the bottom. <clears throat> and 1 will edit the red, 2 will edit the green, 3 will edit the blue, and you just press them all to sort of change the color as you wish. But we don't want this one, so I'm going to delete it by copying over a black. So you hit OK, it saves your palette. And now would be time to make a new tile after I stop recording and then restart to try and avoid any sort of lag from happening. Alright, sorry about the constant interruption. ZQuest is just a really hard program to record in. So anyway, um, what I was starting to do was make some water tiles. For these, I'm gonna basically I'm gonna be lazy. I'm just gonna copy these. And this seems to be a fairly open area to do it. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, to select more than one tile at once, you hold shift. And then you use C and V to copy and paste. Let's take these down here. And I'm going to recolor them using the red wand, because that recolors all the colors on the screen. Um, change the orange to the darker blue. And the red to the lighter blue. Um, to switch between the two, I mean, like to switch between um, tiles while editing them, just hold the control key and then use the arrow keys to maneuver around. Okay, so there we've got our cave water. Fairly basic. And now we've got to find a place to put it. So, scroll down until you have an empty spot. Then edit combo by right clicking it and select the tile we want. That would be down here. And because these are water tiles, we want to have them fully solid. And then change the type to water. I think they need to be fully solid. Let me check the other ones, see how those are made. Uh, well, it looks like one of them has a corner be walkable, but I don't know. It's probably not necessary. So. Uh, instead of having to edit all those combos like that, here's a little shortcut to make it go faster. Click combos here, and then uh, go into the editor, and you can copy and paste them in here. Do it like that. So now we have all these, and it already has the solidity and the type determined. All we have to do is change the tile picture. So that makes making bulk combos significantly faster and easier to do. If you want to have them all be the same thing, just with different graphics, this would be the way to do it. So let's get all those. I guess for the sake of consistency, I might as well make this one um, walkable on that corner. And let's put the water in here. First I'll just sort of do it like this. and then round it off with the corners. Uh, actually, this might want to be over more. Something like that. And then the edge tiles. Okay, I think that looks right. Let me check for solidity. Okay, so yes, you won't be able to walk around this puddle as it is. Instead, we're going to want to raft over it, so let's find the dock tile, which would be here. It looks a little bit out of place, actually, but it, I don't think it's entirely worth making a new tile over. So, I mean, at least for the sake of the tutorial, it's not, so let's put on all those. And this is basically just here to ensure that you have the raft, even though you get the raft even earlier than the whistle, but whatever. So if you'll remember, the correct flag to use for rafting is 8. So you have to put that on all the docks, and then connect them, as so. And for any point where it's possible to turn, you'll want to use a 12.
So let's put those there. And some of these are a little... Oh, he pressed escape to quit. Uh, some of these are a little bit too close for comfort. Like, I don't know if, you're, if it's a good idea to have two 12s in a row. But this should function properly. And I'm running low on time, unfortunately. I was hoping to get more done in this segment. But, um, so next time we're actually going to make that potion cave. I wanted to make a room where you get money. And then maybe the exit to the cave as well. So anyway, we'll save this. And we'll finish that up next time.